we continue to read from Vilap Kunsumanjali, verse 20. I will read the verse and then we continue. Uh, page 88, the last paragraph, Tulasi has brought Swamini back to external consciousness. So we will start from there for the translator. So verse 20, when may this maidservant after washing your lotus feet and brushing your teeth with a twig, seat you in the bathroom and having anointed you with very fragrant oils, massage you there. So I repeat the verse again. Sorry, did you put on the translation? Uh, the, the, the recording? Yes, the recording is... It's going on? Yes. Okay. So repeat the verse. Then, may this maidservant, after washing your lotus feet and brushing your teeth with a twig, seed you in the bathroom and having anointed you with very fragrant oils, massage you there. So now we continue with the explanations. Tulasi has brought Swamini back to external consciousness by making her relish the remembrance of previously played pastimes. After Swamini brushed her teeth, Tulasi hands her a bow-shaped tongue scraper. Swamini holds the scraper between her dender index fingers and thumbs and cleans her tongue with it. Her body gently rocks along while she scrapes her tongue. Tulasi smiles slightly when she sees this. For this motion reminds her of a certain Rasika situation. And by showing her the splendor of her smile, Tulasi makes Swamini most happy. For it also awakens her remembrance of this Rasika situation. So we can see here how the smiling, exchange of the smiles are the way of talking. And those who are very connected deeply in their hearts, they feel each other they understand each other, and they don't need so much words to exchange. They can just make some short glance between each other, and they will transform all feelings and emotions to each other. And we have uh, heard here how through the smiling, Radhika and her close, confidential, intimate maidservant is smiling to her and giving her some hints about different pastimes between Radha and Mohan. 
So no one can learn how to do it on mechanical or artificial way. There is no book or manual which can give us these teachings. Only way is close association with Rasik devotees who can give us this art of feeling in Manjari mood, in Manjari bath, and by meditation on their closeness with Swamini, Sadaka can slowly, gradually develop the same feelings. So, because Tulasi and Radhika, they have the same feelings, they are Tadatmika in their hearts. They can talk just through the smiles. And everything what is necessary, it will be said, it can be said, through this sweet smiles. I just wanted to make this point, because Baba emphasizes it. How smile from Tulasi is invoking and provoking the remembrance in Swami. So this is the sign of intimacy between Radha and her maidservant. Again, Tulasi makes Swamini flush her mouth and then she wipes her hands and mouth with a thin white handkerchief. Swamini then washes her face once again with the nectar of her own smile. The devotee who is fixed in Smaran should be completely free from external consciousness and should identify himself only with his Siddha Swarup. Shall I read it again? The devotee who is fixed in Smaran, should be completely free from external consciousness and should identify himself only with this or his Siddha Svaru. Oh, this is the golden key for a sadhaka. By proper listening, by proper med meditation, and by proper loving connection with Rasik devotees, gradually Sadaka can be first free from materialistic consciousness. Then, simultaneously, Attachment for Radharani is increasing. And the more he is free from materialistic consciousness, the more his Swarupvish, consciousness of his spiritual identity, is growing and becoming condensed. So, in that way, he can relish the pastimes, 
the lilas through his bhajan. Not with his own conception, his own improvisations, like Prabhupada said, with his own concoctions, but through the proper following and attachment with Rasik devotees. The form, sound, touch, taste, and fragrance of Swamini is the only means of survival for such a devotee. He has closed his eyes for the material world, and all other thoughts are insignificant for him. In Prema Bhakti Chandrika, it stated, always dive in the nectar ocean of loving devotion. Everything else is like an ocean of alkali. Everything else is the ocean of alkali. So this liquid of alkali has a bad smell and it's very poisonous. We know when some alkali concentrate in some parts of our body, we feel pain in the neck, in, on the shoulders, on the back, because the alkali is condensed in that place. Different reasons are. But when person is conditioned, he is swimming in the ocean of alkali. Ocean of al materialistic alkali is outside for him and also inside for him. And he cannot survive in that ocean of alkali. Sometimes we are using different medicine, different powders, massages, treatments to remove this alkali. But acharyas are giving the medicine here for devotees who wants to go out from this ocean of alkali, poison, ocean of poisonous. And they are saying they are always diving in a nectar ocean of loving devotion. They are diving. They are not just standing on the shore. They are not just swimming, they are diving. And when they are diving, their spiritual identity is developing, their heart is melting, and in that way they are not contaminated contaminated with ocean of alkali. And Baba, this Chakshuji read before, the form, sound, touch, taste, and fragrance of Swamini is the only means of survival for such a devotee. This is the ocean for such a devotee. He wants to
to die with all his senses. Not just to swim, not just to stand on the shore and look what's going on. No, he wants to dive all his senses in devotional service to Radharani. So the process of diving is and learning and absorbing and accepting this process of diving is completely different from the process of learning how to swim. We can swim expertly on the surface of the ocean, of the water, very expertly. But it doesn't mean that we know how to dive. And someone who is interesting only for diving, he is not interesting for swimming. He is not putting so much energy in swimming in all directions, searching for all subjects. He wants to dive deeply in one mellow. So, for that reason, even illiterate persons can be qualified for diving. Even foolish children can be qualified for diving, not for swimming, for diving, because they are interesting for one pointed, one mellow to dive in it. They don't need to know all philosophy, all shastras, all verses, all books from beginning to the end and again opposite. No. Their only qualification is great desire to learn to dive in the ocean of pure, sweet devotional service to Shimateradharana. And for them, for this kind of a kanta devotees, all other oceans are just a poison. Alkali. Baba is using this word. So many times we are asking ourselves or talking between each other or asking the Guru Dev how to dive, how to learn to dive. And the answer is always the same. You have to have desire for diving process. And when you have really genuine sincere desire for diving, then you will automatically associate with those persons who are already diving. Because only they can learn us how to dive. Those who are very good, expert swimmers, they cannot learn us how really to dive and how really to relish diving. They can just maybe inform us in best cases. They can just inform us, you know, there is swimming process and I know there is some diving process, but they don't have experience. And we need experienced divers. So we need their kripa. to be able to dive deeply. Gurudev, do you want to help us in this diving process? You are helping us, but... <laughs> Gurudev said, 
I'm very happy. You are my word. This is all your words. This is all your hearts. I'm speaking just <laughs> like a robot. And there are two different schools. One school for swimming and one school for diving. Oh, and maybe me. somebody who dives doesn't even know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's like this. Yeah. And, <laughs> and like also this. there are extreme, very, very many people nowadays in the younger generation who can swim. But very, very few who go to this diving school. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Mandawa. And then there is an interesting thing in Asia. We have these pearl divers who, ah. who dive down for, to get the pearls from the uh, ground. <laughs> and they are very trained and they have, uh, they can take in a lot of oxygen to dive very deep down and stay there and get the right, um, I don't know what it's called. It's oysters. Oysters, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they are they're the perfect the perfect divers in the world and they get the pearls. The, the best of the ocean. Yeah. And they are not diving in the ocean of Alkali. <laughs> 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 Yeah. And the Gurudev is our best teacher for diving the pearls from yes. the deepest part of ocean, mm. from the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> and, and, and pearls with the most beautiful shinings. Yeah. And this is the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Manjari Bhavola Sarati. These kind of pearls, we are interesting. Mm. Wow. Thank you, my friend. The bathroom is in a secret quarter. The door is closed. Swamini is alone with Tulasi sitting on a marble chair. All the paraphernalia for her bath are put ready. Tulasi is rendering the service of rubbing Swamini's limbs with oil. She reveals Swamini's Sri Anga, the beautiful body, and massages it with oil. Fortunate Tulasi can now freely massage those limbs that even ah. Shyam is not allowed to see with oil. Tulasi massages all Radhika's limbs from tip to toe with fragrant Narayan oil, a special oil for sore muscles. Touching her just like Krishna does. This is a heart's service. This is the heart service. Antara Seva. Deep inside Seva has to be done to Bhava Mai Radha. She is embodiment of Bhava or Mahabhava. 
and she must be served with also embodiments of this bhava. Bhava de. It's not possible to touch bhava mairada without feelings of bhava. This is why we need meditation on our sorrow. And not meditation only, but identification. And in that way, by following those who are already perfect, by looking at them, how they are in, in our heart, looking at them with our heart, slowly and gradually, we can receive their feelings and expertise in that seva. We cannot do it alone. And Raghunath here is touching Radharani just like Krishna does. This is the expertise and artfulness of Manjari Seva. Or maybe we can say even Kinkari Seva. To touch Radharani in the way that she thinks that Krishna is touching her. Who can learn it? No one. It should be received. This artfulness skill only can be received by the Kripa. She's, Tulsi is smiling, Baba was saying in the beginning, she was smiling in the way that Radhika immediately understand what is behind that smile. And now she's touching Radhika in a such a way that she feels that Krishna, her lover, is touching her. So this is the expertise of expert devotees. And we sadhakas, if we want to practice properly sadhana, we should listen and meditate on their expertise. Then this is the heart service. We should receive this Kripa Seva from someone who is already doing this heart service. And this is the key point. And when we follow this, follow, follow this then all obstacles in devotional life will be minimized. But if we try to concoct our own way, many turns, thorns will appear on this path of devotional life and practice. First of all, Tulasi opens Swamini's cloud blue braid, moistens it with scented oil and combs it with a jewel comb. Each strand of hair, of hair is dearer to her 
than millions of lives. Tulasi experience is all of Swami's sweetnesses. Gaurange Mriyadini. The softness of a golden body. Smite Madurima. The sweetness of a smile. Netrankale Dragima. The wideness of her eyes. And Vakshogi. Ye Garima, the vastness of her breasts. When Tulas is finished, she calls Radhika thus breaking her meditation on Krishna like a bolt out of the blue. Startled, Sri Radhika asks, Who is it? Oh, is it you, Tulasi? Your touch is just like Krishna's. So Tulasi here is experiences Radhika's sweetness. Devotees who want to follow Vraja mood, they are interesting only for the sweetness and the beauty of their beloved Ishtadev. Sweetness. They are not interesting about any other opulences. So, Tulasi Baba is mentioning here, Tulasi here is relishing Radharani's soft golden body this kind of sweetness of Radhika's softness golden body is something which a chance to lasi sweetness of her smile Radhika has many kinds of Waves of smiling. Sometimes her smile is just present in her eyes, not in the mouth, on the lips. Sometimes she is smiling so softly. It's very difficult to notice. Sometimes she is smiling when her white face is a little bit visible. And sometimes she is smiling loudly. Different kinds of smiles Manjaris are relishing in their swami. And these kind of smiles are always according to some specific situation, time, and lila. And this is the sweetness, more relishable sweetness for the Manjaris. sweetness of her eyes, we should meditate on that. When they are half closed, or when they are broadly open, her eyes, when they are becoming like a lot of petals, big, and sometimes her glances are so sharp through the corner of her eyes. 
And this is the sweetness of Radharani's expression of love. And by the mercy of Radharani's maidservants, we can listen this, we can meditate on this, we can read this, we can nourish each other about these subjects. And in that way, practice Manjari Bhav Sada. It is the service of Baba Mai, all emotional radica, and one must dive in the waves of these bhavas. Learning these services from those who have already dived in before. This is instruction. You see, little Lila. Little instruction. Little Lila, little instruction. Because Baba and our Acharyas wants to teach us how to properly approach Lila with our heart, feelings, mind, and our practice. To never deviate. Because this is the most easiest and fastest way. When we deviate from the path, we always have to come back again. And from the beginning, starts again. So this is the wasting of time. I jump three steps, you know, further, and then I'm going five steps down. This is not advancement. And Baba is giving here very, very expertly how to approach this subject in the proper way. To learn these services from those who have already dived in before. We already talked about that. Blissfully render loving devotional service with Sri Rupa Manjari, Sri Rati Manjari. Lavanga Manjari, Manjulali Manjari, Sri Rasa Manjari, Kasturika Manjari, and others. I will follow their footsteps and render loving devotional service. Simply, on the hints, I will understand what is my duty. I will always be passionately absorbed in Radha and Krishna's forms and qualities while I reside amongst the Sakis. By simply continuing to meditate on these things, the revelations will come. So again here, Narottam Das Thakur is saying, I don't see me and Radha. I want to see myself like maidservants of Shin Mataradharani who are surround, surrounded by all her maid servants. 
and Prabhupada um, Narutam Das Thakur, he is mentioning here Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, Lavanga Manjari, Manjulali Manjari, Rata, and so on, so on, so on, so on, up to my Guru Manjari. So this is the loving association. Narutam Das Thakur doesn't want to teach us, me and Radha, and no one else around me. And when someone else is between us, he is obstacle for my meditation. No, it doesn't work this. He wants to teach us that we should connect ourselves with the hearts of those who are already diving in devotional service to Srimati Radharani. And he says, then I'm waiting their hints. to do some of my seva, some of my duty. Their hints. And this is a very important, because this is the following, Anugatya. Vraja Loka Anusarata. Anusarata means Anugatya, it means following the mood, of previous acharyas. And sometimes appears the blockage in the in the head. If I follow them, I will never come to Radharani. This is bodily conception of life. This is mind concoction, ego concoction. It doesn't work in spiritual life like that. New Manjari wants to be surrounded with loving association of already perfect maid servants. New Manjari doesn't want to do anything independently. She wants to depend completely on the toads and feelings of other manjaris. And devotees practicing this kind of following also in Sadakavesh. I want to depend on the words of Acharyas. I want to depend on the instructions of Acharyas. So this simultaneous dependence we should practice by following previous acharyas or rasic devotees or our Gurudev and Guru Manjari. We cannot neglect Guru from Guru Manjari. We cannot separate it. In Sadaka Vesh, I am serving, and in Sita Vesh, I am also serving. And for that, I'm sorry that I'm taking so much time for that, but this is a crucial because last weeks we have so many conversations about this subject. Really. The essence of all instructions is given in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. By Rupa Goswami, Seva Sadaka Rupena, Sida Rupena Chatrahi, Tadbhava Lipsuna Karya, Raja Lokas Anusarata. Okay, Sanskrit doesn't mean, but Seva Sadaka Rupena means in this Sadaka Vesh, Seva must be performed according to instruction of the Guru. And sometimes we are doing this seva with our bodies. And we are not aware about our spiritual identity. Then this seva is 
you know, very nice, very important, but it's not the end. If we are not aware that in the same time we should practice Siddha from our spiritual body, the Seva, then we can come in the trap of bodily consciousness, Vaidhi principle, religious principle, and ultimately we can become workaholic, not sevaholic, but workaholic. Then devotee understands this and says, okay, I will not do seva outside. I understand that, that inner seva is important. And he starts to practice bhajan in his swarup. And he doesn't want to act outside in any way. But this is also not a proper balance. Because it said Seva Sadaka Rupena Siddha Rupena simultaneously. And through this we should make a balance in our daily life. Because we we have bodies and we have to do daily life. And then third obstacle is coming, which Rupa Goswami is mentioning following. Anusarata, the mood, the mellow of desirable goal, of desirable Vrajavasis, who are already <clears throat> in that mood. Because for the conditioned soul, the most difficult thing is to follow someone. And it's always speculate. Like Gurudev is joking with all of us, you are independent. You are always want to be independent. Oh, very good, very nice. Just continue to be independent and look where brought you. It's very difficult to follow for the conditioned soul. But the only medicine to Overcome this condition, nature is to follow those who are not under the gunas, who are already deeply diving in the ocean of devotion. So we can see here the three points, sadaka rupena, siddha rupena, and following the mood, desirable mood. They have to be balanced together. If something is missing, the process is very tough, full of obstacles. But if those three things are combined together and properly balanced, then devotee can gradually and surely advance in his life, depending not on his, not on his ability, but on Kripa. And I remember one letter which Jiva Goswami exchanged with Narottam Das Thakur and uh, two more devotees. I don't know their names. I remember only Narottam Das Thakur. And they wrote to him, very short letter, please give us instruction how to live our daily life. According to the instruction of Seva Sadaka Rupena, Siddha Rupena Chatrahi, please give us more explanation. 
And Gijiva Goswami, very briefly, respond to that letter and said, in your sadhaka wish, you know, you have to do your daily bodily duties and services. Because the word sadhaka wish is concerned with the body. And it means shravana, kirtana, smara, and so on. And also other things, according to the time, circumstances, and the candidate. And then he explained his, that in Siddha Rup, Siddha Swarup, in eternal spiritual body, it's possible to offer pure devotion service. So these two things has to go simultaneously and nourished by the anugatya or following the mood of specific rajavasis. I'm sorry that I took this time for explaining this, but honestly to say last few weeks we have so much discussion about this because devotees want to go deeper in this understanding how to apply bhakti in daily life. And I found maybe someone here from International Zoom Sangha can find some help from those words of our charyas. Maybe Gurudev can enlighten us more. Through constant meditation, Krishna will appear in the heart, and by Krishna's grace, an ignorant soul will cross over the ocean of rasa. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Narad Muni gives the example of the absorption of the grass worm. The grass worm who gets trapped in a hole by a hostile bee becomes a bee. Also, by always being absorbed in thoughts of it, be it in fear and amnity. If one can go through such a metamorphosis, through a material process, what doubt can there be then that one can attain Manjari Swarup, gi giving up material bodily consciousness as a result of intense transcendental devotional meditation? Intense. Intense devotional means Meditation means with full attachment. Without attachment, it's not possible to practice intense meditation. But when the raga is present in the heart, at least a little bit, attachment, 
then because of the support and the power of attachment, meditation becomes more natural and intense. After massaging her limbs with oil, Tulasi will now perfume Swamini with lotus pollen and soft, fragrant powders. When Tulasi massaged her with oil, Swamini experienced the touch of Syamasundar. Tulasi's call is falling from the sky for her. While she perfumes Swamini, Tulasi attracts her attention by reminding her of her previous pastimes with Krishna and thus drowns her in waves of rasa. Swamini, I remember how one day I performed you in a lonely place on the bank of the Jamuna, and that Nagara was sitting up in a high katamba tree, secretly watching you in this sweet undressed state and winking to me not to tell you, as if repeatedly begging me with folded hands. Tulasi, let me enjoy this sight for a moment. I gave him so much relish that time by showing you to him in this beautiful way without dress and ornaments. Blessed these maidservants are with this sublime service. They know exactly how to serve according to time, place and circumstances. bringing all these relishable memories to Baba Mai's heart and making her swim in waves of rasa. So this is the expertise of Seva. How to serve according to the time, circumstances, and what Baba is saying more. place and we sh if we remember the activities of our acharyas even on their in their sadaka wishes they were serving according to the candidates they were preaching according to the ability of the people to understand they were serving according to the time, place, and circumstances. See, this is the art of Seva. If we remember the Prabhupada, immediately we can understand how he perfectly, according to the time, candidates, circumstances, and place try to spread this pure bhakti. The same thing goes to our Gurudev. 
he exactly knows the minds of people who are approaching him, the consciousness of the people who are trying to take a shelter of him, consciousness of us Westerns, the people who are living in the 2021st century. He knows how to deal with us, with all us, our good qualities and also bad qualities. Bhaktivinoda Thakur did the same thing according to the time, place and circumstances. He was working for the English government. Many people Gurudev maybe will confirm that. Many people from India hated him because of that. Because he was cooperating with English rulers, English government. But he didn't care. He knew, I am putting the base for this Western civilization, for Western people who will come later. And he exactly because he was working with English men, he perfectly knew the way of their thinking, logic, consciousness, habits, how to present Krishna consciousness. in a nice way that they can digest it. So every Acharya is acting according to the time, candidates, place and circumstances. This is the expertise of their Seva and also this is the proof how they are guided inside the Dadi Buddhi Yogam Tam. How they are guiding and how Radhika and Krishna gave them intelligence to do the Seva. So in our small worlds, individual worlds, we also need intelligence, spiritual intelligence strength, how to deal with our small world in such a way that it will be most easiest for us to attain our spiritual goal. And someone has circumstances that he is a hard worker. Someone is living in the place which is peaceful, without so much disturbances, and someone else is intellectual and is maybe living in very urban city environment with full of noise, because this is the circumstances of his life. But the Seva Sadaka Rupena Sida Rupena Chatraki Vraja Lokanusa is never changing. And for that we need the guidance. How to apply this simple instruction and to balance our life in such a way that we attain our desirable goal. I wanted to try to connect what you said about time, place and circumstance to the 
to the lines above, namely that when Tulasi massages Swamini, she feels the touch of Mohan, which makes my heart <laughs> beat with the mystery. And that, and then the little anecdote, the little story about where she and Krishna collaborate, they work together so that Krishna can observe Swamini. I wonder if this is examples of time, place, and circumstance in the sense that for the perfection of Prem, for the perfection of Swamini's divine love, love for Mohan, in order to love perfectly, she also needs to make that object of her love participate. in the love, in the loving. We say that Swamini is highest because she's prema, she's perfectly representing the perfect love of God. But in order to do this, she must adjust, she must make him present. She must adjust to the time, place, and circumstance. She must, she must listen also to the desires and the place of Shamasundar so that he too is already touching her and that so he too can play by the side of the Amuna and, and observe her all orchestrated by all directed by uh, Tulasi. I don't, I wonder what you think of this impression. I like it. I don't know what Guru Dev or other devotees are thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I like this, this collaboration. Please, Guru Dev. We don't hear you. The iPad is muted. If he wants to stay muted, okay. Okay. When there is a love, there is perfect collaboration. Sometimes we want to cooperate very nicely, but without love and emotions, and everything is spoiled. <laughs> but when the love is present, like an essence, and we want to cooperate, even if we are not so if we are not so perfect we are making so much mistakes because of this essence which connecting us and this is the pure love then collaboration is perfect so tulasi she didn't know that krishna already came on the tree, but somehow she noticed him. And through the glances, they made connection. Ah, you are hiding. I understand why you are hiding. You want to see my Swamini without clothes. Okay. 
I understand desire of your heart. You know? And I will try to fulfill that desire. And Krishna immediately reciprocates, yeah, please, 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 I want to enjoy more and more and more. Don't tell her. Please. Krishna is saying, Manjari, please. <laughs> She's be he is begging her. I want to dive in that ocean of Mahabhava, golden body, Lavanya, more and more. So please help me, don't tell her. Mm. Like Kudavaji said, this is cooperation, you know. But this kind of cooperation shows how Krishna depends on Manjari. So, to cooperate requires understanding the mind and heart. It's a, three part, it's a three-part cooperation, isn't it? Uh, I, I Sorry, but, but I didn't hear you. It is? A three-part cooperation. Yeah, three-part, yeah. Always those three persons are always dancing together in the same place. Prema makes Krishna to dance. How? By showing her beautiful body. He's intoxicated on the tree. He's trying not to fall down, you know. <laughs> then Prema makes Manjari to dance. Manjari is so happy when she sees this situation, this Paraki Bhava mood. And also, Radhika, finally, she becomes happy. Although she is a little bit angry on Tulasi. Why you didn't tell me before? You are a liar. I don't have any trust in you. Never do it again. <laughs> but her heart is dancing because of Manjari Sid. Three, like you said, three of them. Yeah. And Maha Mantra. This is the Maha Mantra, which Gurudev always explaining to us. And now Mantra, the, mm, sorry. Please. Mantra, but Maha. Why? Because there are three of them are in most intimate situation. This is the celebration of all mantras. Maha, the greatest. Because this is the greatest exchange of amorous pastimes with the help, necessary help of Manjari. Please, Udavaj. I'm just going to add on that this is another way, yet another way of understanding the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because the Manjari position is necessary, and this is our position. So thanks to Mahaprabhu, the loving pastimes of Radha and Mohan need the Manjari as well. And this is what we aim for. This is our goal, to take this position which Mahaprabhu has opened up for us. Through the Rupa Anuga devotees. In close association with Rupa Nuga devotees. This is why I say goal. A goal, yes. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yes. So now always be surrounded, protected also with loving association 
of Rupa Anuga's devotees or Gora Bhakta Vrinda. Real Gora Bhakta Vrinda are Rupa Anugas. Thank you. Thank you. That was it. One of one of Agyavan who is the pare. This is in the second chatami. Narutam Das Hatupana. Kono Kono Bhagavan Bhuste. Some fortunate person can understand this. Not everyone can understand. They practice. But what they practice, they don't know. Kono Kono Bhagavan can understand this. Some fortunate person can understand Swamini is immersed in the bliss of Krishna consciousness when she hears Tulasi's Rasika descriptions. Priti Vishayananda Dat Ashraya Ananda. The pleasure of the object of love is the pleasure of the subject of love. <laughs> Object and subject, there are two subjects. The pleasure of the object of love is the pleasure of the subject of love. Blessed is this kinkari. Wow. She serves exactly according to the requirement and the time. Requirement to understand requirement in that moment, in that circumstances, the requirement of Swamini. Goal. Not what full object goal. Goal. Yeah. What is required? This is the day when 24 7 day to day working. And this is the Mandri Bhav practice. 24 7. Every time you can meditate. Requirement of my goal. What is my requirement? I work for that, serve to that. That is the subject job.
And this is the pure love, Prema. To fulfill requirements of beloved Ishtadev. Object. Object. Yes. And for that we need close association with those who already have their object fixed in their hearts. I want to cook Swamini what I want to eat. <laughs> we can. This is not good. This is not devotion. This is vegan concern. <laughs> yes. I don't want to eat milk because it will ruin my health. It's <laughs> about your health. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bother for that. What you yeah. like. But if you like milk, then I will make an ocean of milk and preparations only from milk. <laughs> just to fulfill your requirements. <laughs> Vegan method. I remember when Guru the first time, at least I heard him a few years ago, expressed this vegan mentality in front of the vegans. <laughs> He blew the mind of all of them. Against devotion? Yeah. Very much. But the argument is very strong, Gurudev. I want to protect the cows. <laughs> But one cow I don't take care. I want to protect, but I have no time for protection. To care one cow and speed it. No service. So this is the reason why it's so difficult from conditioned consciousness to really deeply, deeply understand spiritual consciousness and way of feeling, thinking and doing. So Guru, Gurudev wants to feed all of us with the milk. And for vegans it will be very difficult to escape. They cannot come back if you will. Yeah. You will say, come back to the devotion next life. For vegan, it's not possible to come in this life for devotion. Don't it. But we also need a mercy guru there to really properly understand this point. Mahanidhi Swami say there are two two God, uh, Vaishnava. One is modern, one is traditional. 
आधुनिक Guru is the goal and Guru is the way. Both is Guru. There is no struggle. This is modern glory of Krishna. In person. Without the struggle. And this is Guru Dev. It's also Mayavada. It's not only pure impersonalism. It's Mayavada actually. Right, I agree. Is the modern, no? Yeah, Mayavada is very modern. <laughs> no, for personal. Because they impersonalists. Have, oh, sorry. They have no personal practice, so yeah. they are impersonalists. Yeah. They don't care for requirements of object of love. No, yeah, that doesn't mean. They don't want to see objects. They see only themselves, subjects. <laughs> and this is my avada. This is my Because they put everything on the bodily consciousness of life. My Gurudev is a body, actually. Mm -hmm. And Radha and Krishna are also blood, flesh, bones, bodies. Yeah. Or metal, wood, stone, and so on. What is impersonal and Mayavad? When Mayavad comes to me, I say, what is the difference between the personal and impersonal philosophy? He said to me, very good thing. He said, we also talk about Krishna and Rama, but we don't believe <laughs> that he is a God. But we give the example. And you believe because you believe personal. So this is devotion. And we don't believe it. And we take only example of them. And we convince for myself. That is my work. Using them. using them for my benefit. Mm. Then it's myself in center. Yeah, I'm the center. The God is not a center. That is impersonal philosophy. And these days, you see this modern philosophy is very problematic. So they don't talk about Krishna. Radhika only Krishna. So we need to make Mayavad with Krishna. Radhika you cannot do in person. And this becomes practice. It is more easy to do that. For me it was very re relieving when I put Radha Mohan in center and I take myself outside. I think it's very relieving. It's like, wow. Jai yeah. It's not so stressful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are maybe still believing some traditional Go on by reading. Fifteen minutes more. Swamini is immersed in the bliss of Krishna consciousness. Wow. Krishna consciousness. <laughs> this is Krishna. This is Prabhupada. Only Swami. Is much no other. So why Prabhupada give Krishna consciousness that if you want to be Krishna conscious, you have to be 
takes center of radius. This is the parakya bhav talking about Krishna consciousness. Is all Mahajan talk in parakya bhav? Subject is something and meaning is something. Good. Explain what I said. How good have you already explained? You gave enough. No, no. We should meditate in the, of this word, not drawing. It's very clear. Maybe someone else can explain. <coughs> Read that. Swamini is immersed in the bliss of Krishna consciousness when she hears Tulasi's Rasika descriptions. Wow! Jaiho. Yeah. And this is the science of Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada is saying. This is a real science. Yeah. <laughs> this relationship, loving, Craziness, madness out of love is the Krishna consciousness, ah, which is ah. most prominent in Shimata Radharani. But he written that in Parakya mood. That everything, everyone according to his adhikar understands that. <laughs> But only devotees who really receive mercy, like our Gurudev, who is trying to help us, can penetrate deeply in the meaning of these words through their spiritual feelings. And the madness is that Swamini is in Krishna consciousness by hearing stories from. Tulasi about herself, about the pastime. Oh, Tulasi that, make more mad to her. Yeah. Because she is also in pastime, but this pastime will come beautiful when Krishna is near to her near to her, and how she become more mad, that is beautiful. And then she also know that Krishna is sitting on the tree, but she ignores it. <laughs> Does she even know, and she will not know, she know everything, but she ignore to bother that Krishna mm. I think we are sitting there. See the answer I see. Prema is dancing. The Prema dance, then looking this Krishna dance. <laughs> Just like us Jivas, Gurudev, we don't, we're already in it, we already have mercy, and we don't even know it. We're blind. Yeah. Right. In, in uh, material clothing. Yes. Right now, yeah, go on. Read. Now follows the relish of the Snan Seva. In this way, one service follows the other. No. Oh, Rade, I will wash your lotus feet and brush your amazing row of teeth before. Bringing you into another room. 
for your bath, where I will beg you to sit down on a platform. I will anoint your tender limbs with fragrant oil and then behold your brilliant fragrant body. Raghunathas Goswami sits in his Pachankutir and offers these prayers with all his heart. O Haribat, if you desire such devotional service, then worship the lotus feet of Das Goswami in your Smaran. Lade. Yeah. Upanuga, what is Upanuga meaning? Raga Anuga, what is meaning of Raga? Upanuga means not only Rupa Goswami, who follow Rupa Goswami, they are Upanuga. And really, Raghunath Das Goswami is following really the mood of Rupa Goswami. Because as a teacher, he has to teach different things. But what his mood was there, only Raghunath Das Goswami knows, Rati Manjari knows that what is my guru mood and what he practiced. Anugata. Rupa Anugata is Rupa Anugata. <coughs> Sri Radhe, thank you. Jai Jai Sri Radhe, Jai Jai Sri Radhe. Thank you, Chakshuji. You do great thank job. You. Thank you, Gurudev, for your mercy. You have to always read. You are the best. Possible. No, you cannot escape with this. <laughs> I have to do this, Seva. Fact. You have a different chakti. <laughs> Ah, there, there. Radhe, 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 Thank you very much. Finalmente. Yeah. Finally, we heard you. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Udavaji, thank you also. I... Yeah, thank you, Goranga. So beautiful explanations. No, no you. Please, you have to follow Gurudev's instructions to inspire all of us with your readings. <laughs> Sada Karupena. <laughs> you know? And we swim in your explanations. Yeah. In the next ocean of your explanations. This is Very just sweet ocean. This is just explanations of our beautiful Acharyas. And Gurudev is giving such a such a angle that we foolish person like I am can little enter in this ocean, like you said. Otherwise, it's not possible. Thank you. Thank you. You're to expert, all your expert diver mm. for the pearls. Yeah. <laughs>